In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. When we started the service this very morning, I proclaimed the words, Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. And the response, of course, Amen. This Amen of the people, this is the affirmation that we need to begin our corporate worship together. And though this Amen has been affirmed in strange and different ways these past five months, indeed this Amen has been shared by Christians across the world and over history. That Amen that we say so frequently, that sounds so similar across many languages, Amen or Amin, is needed for our participation in bringing glory to God. And every amen is a proclamation of, so be it. It's what this word means. A proclamation of agreement, an affirmation in what is being proclaimed or what is happening. It is being involved in this blessing or action that is taking place. This traces back millennia. Last evening, during the Great Vespers service of this feast day, if you were to follow along and pray along with our sister parish, the Assumption Church in Long Beach, for their feast day, we read three Old Testament prophecy passages from Genesis, from Ezekiel, and from Proverbs. And they presented us with a series of images, all with references, beautiful references to the Theotokos. She is the latter ascending from earth to heaven, beheld by the patriarch Jacob in a vision. She is the house of God and the gate of heaven. This is what we read in Genesis chapter 28. She is the eastern gate of the temple, sanctuary which remains shut, a virgin. No man enters, for the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered through it, as Ezekiel prophesies in chapter 44 of Ezekiel. She is wisdom, or the house of wisdom, of which King Solomon speaks in Proverbs chapter 9. The readings all represent three divisions of the Old Testament, the law, or the Torah, the prophets, and the wisdom writings. This is to teach us something beautiful, that Mary, the Virgin Mary, is the daughter of Zion, the beginning of this new covenant. She is the gateway to paradise, and this is marked by her participation in the will of God and his coming into humanity. As we read from the first chapter in the Gospel of Luke, which is proclaimed on the feast day of the Annunciation on March 25th, the Archangel Gabriel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High God will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And we remember and we note Mary's beautiful response. Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Though she didn't say the word exactly, that let it be is perhaps the greatest amen ever spoken in human existence. Brothers and sisters, the entirety of the scriptures, the whole scope of our rich theology and tradition in our church can be best summarized with a simple teaching that God is love. We are so desperately loved by our Creator that ever since we took our first breath in this life, ever since the moment we fell and turned from Him, our God yearns for us and rescues us. And in this great mystery of our redemption and salvation in Christ, Mary, the Panagia, has an incredible role in God's economia, in his economy or his actions in the world. Not only in her amen, in her let it be. Nor did it end with her giving birth or her raising Jesus as a child. Because we can see her not only at the Annunciation and the birth of Jesus, but also at his first miracle at the wedding wedding in Cana. She is also at the foot of the cross, 
The Virgin Mary is also with the church at the Pentecost event. As St. John of Damascus said, in the name Theotokos is contained the whole mystery of God's economy. Perhaps we could even say that in the Theotokos is contained the whole mystery of our salvation, our liberation, our true life in Christ. In the life and the example of Mary, we see the paradoxical truth of our salvation. That is, to receive true freedom, we must be slaves first. To receive true salvation and liberation, we must be obedient first. To receive true life, we must die. We must lose ourselves and receive Christ fully. While this feast is called the Dormition, or the falling asleep of the Theotokos, in reality it's a celebration of her victory over death because of her life in her Son, Jesus Christ. It is a celebration of her Passover from this life into eternal life. She indeed is the living icon of our life with God. This feast day and the example of the Panagia is a celebration that confirms the promise of our own resurrection in Christ. This is why this feast day is sometimes referred to as the Summer Pascha, because it is indeed a resurrectional event. The example of Mary shows us not only how we are called to live, but really how we are called to die. The Theotokos, the Mother of God, our mother today passes from death into true life. As we hear from the hymn of today's feast, in giving birth you preserved your virginity. In your dormition you did not abandon the world of Theotokos. As mother of life you departed to the source of life, delivering our souls from death by your intercessions. In our lives today, we can be just like Martha in today's gospel reading, anxious and troubled about many things. And of course, that word being troubled, or that anxious word, is from the Greek merimnas, merimnas peripola, which literally means to be split apart into pieces, to be divided. And this is in direct contrast to the call for unity, for oneness, to be one in union with God which so much of our prayers and so much of our, our scripture speak to about our desire to be one or to be whole. But Martha's sister Mary, and of course the Theotokos, Mary, the mother of God, always show us that one thing is needful. That good portion shall be never taken away. May she continue to intercede for us and to lead us into life with her son, and our God. Peragia Theotokia Sosonimas, most holy Theotokos, save us, pray for us, intercede for us. Amen.